Okay, so before you gross any specimen, you want to be checking your patient identifiers to make sure that it's consistent with what you're seeing in front of you. You also want to check orientation and see if that's provided. So good job, everyone. This is a thyroid gland. And normal anatomy of a thyroid gland consists of two lobes connected by an isthmus. So in this case, we have right lobe, isthmus, and left lobe oriented with a stitch on the upper pole. So this is how it sits in the body. This is the anterior surface. And the posterior surface is more concave since our trachea sits right in here. Um, a lot of pathology can distort this relationship, so orientation provided by the surgeon is greatly appreciated. So on initial examination, you can see that the lobes are very differently sized. So at the time of opening, we do make cut sections into the organ to let fixation occur, and this is what we're seeing. So in the left lobe, we have this large lesion occupying the majority of the parenchyma, and if we move to the right lobe, we can see that there is another nodule here, and then we start to see some more normal parenchyma at the superior aspect. Okay, so when you see a large lesion like this, it's important to document where it is and how much of the parenchyma it is occupying. So I would measure this lesion in three dimensions and orient that measurement. So superior, inferior, medial, lateral, and anterior, posterior, to get the pathologist an idea of where the lesion is located and how large it is. I would then describe the appearance of it. So I would say it is a well-circumscribed brown mass with a central cystic area. You can see in here that it looks kind of cystic and hemorrhagic at the center of this lesion. When you compare that to the contralateral lobe of the thyroid, you see that this mass is also similar in appearance. So it is sort of that tan brown homogeneous look with some central areas of hemorrhage. You also want to take a look and assess whether or not these two lesions are connected. And so at this point in time, I don't think they are, but you definitely have to section through the isthmus to make that correlation. Okay, so Amy, before you submit, what do you think is happening? So this to me looks like a malignant lesion because it does have that sort of cystic degeneration and it is occupying both lobes and is quite large. I would want to correlate with um, any previous fine needle aspirates to see if there is a previous diagnosis prior to beginning grossing the specimen. Okay, so the history for this is an FNA saying suspicious for malignancy. Okay, so knowing that history, I would want to section at least one per centimeter, and I would want to know which type of neoplasm we are dealing with, because that would shape how I submit this thyroid gland. Um, some lesions were more concerned about capsular invasion, and so that's when I would want to be sampling the capsule of the lesion in relationship to the normal parenchyma and thyroid capsule. So in this case, all we have is suspicious for malignancy. Right, so in this case, I would definitely be consulting the pathologist because it is quite a large specimen, and then see what their opinion is. But if they were not available, I would definitely be on the more conservative side and submit the entire capsule of this lesion. Okay, so I'm gonna put on my head and neck pathology hat, and I will say that the FNA area was indeed the larger mass, and that uh, it was suspicious, for, it had suspicious for papillary features. Okay, so in that case, I would still want to heavily sample the capsule and show all the different areas within the mass. So that cystic area I'd want to show, as well as the other more homogeneous areas within the lesion. Okay, so let's switch gears a bit. So what if the history was actually saying benign? Right, so if we did have a history showing a final aspirate of a benign lesion, that's when we'd want to do more representative sections through the mass. So um, Obviously, grossly, if you see a mass that looks very heterogeneous and you have cystic and necrotic areas, that would heighten my suspicion and maybe I'd submit those areas more heavily. If it was a large neoplasm, again, I would like to consult either my peers or a pathologist to give their opinion on how much they'd like to see. But if it is homogenous and there isn't a fine needle aspirate showing that it is a benign lesion, that's when I would be on the conservative side and be representative. Also, I'd like to add that if a history like that comes up, so obviously you have a specimen like this that's really suspicious for a malignant process. You do your history, you do your digging, and it says benign. I think your index of um, um, suspicion should also go up that maybe you're not getting your full history, because it's really hard to believe that something like this would give you a benign finding, right? So I think um, if you're able to uh, find more history, um, correlate the history with other findings, certainly talk to um, the pathologist uh, that's going to be in charge of this case, and if needed, talk to the clinician that's going to, uh, that, um, or the surgeon that took this out. Because, yeah, when things don't add up, just always have a very high index of suspicion to try and correlate the, those um, not consistent histories, for example. Okay, thank you. That was good. So, we're going to proceed with our second uh, question.
question is, which of the following mutations is associated with thyroid carcinoma? Okay, I think um, for the most part, people um, chose part A or part, answer A, it's the fat safety for gamma. So that's the correct answer. The other ones, well, some of them are familiar. The other ones, I literally just sprung up a bunch of letters together. Um, they're nonsensical. So if anyone would like some bonus points, can someone tell me via chat or just shout it out, which cancer PAX AP for gamma is associated with specifically the thyroid? Okay, so we do have an answer, um, follicular. So good, thank you for that. And we will go with the last poll question. This one's going to be a bit more discussion afterwards as well. Thank you. The classic descriptor for Graves thyroid is beaky red. Some say meany. But I'd like to open up the discussion here and look at the other choices. Um, among those other foot acronyms, can someone tell me what lardaceous is associated with, specifically which organ and what disease? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Some people are not getting the Bueller reference. That's okay. Okay, good. So someone got amyloidosis of what organ though? Of the spleen. Excellent. Thank you. Um, what about chocolates? Just having a few last night. It's yummy. <laughs> oh, here we go. Cysts and endometriosis. Thank you. And then the last one, watermelon. Watermelon. Where is that? Uh, oh, that was quick. Thank you. Gave. So stomach. Watermelon stomach is a descriptor. Mostly in this topic, sadly. It's not really a, a gross finding search path, but endoscopically, stomach has been described with watermelon with a disease called Gabe. Okay, I think that's all we have for now. Thank you, thank you. I think, um, thank you for participating here with us. The goal with this, I hope um, you found this uh, very useful. I certainly think um, we found it useful and the, the plan is to keep going with this on a regular basis. Thank you so much.